Kane is the best of all rulers of all Nazgoth. Yes. And it is very challenging. Kane has the subordinates who challenge Kane's natural beauty. So Kane throws them in the pit. Yes. Then, Kane is minding his own business, manipulating time as Kane does. Yes. And the subordinate comes back as the Zombleman and punches Kane in his face for no reasons. But Kane is not unlike the god. And with his power, Kane will bitch slap the stars. Kane is more mysterious than the dark side of the moon. Has more strength than the raging fire. More force than a great typhoon. Swifter than the coursing river. He is more than a man. Some say that Kane does things backwards, yes. But Kane believes he merely has the alternate perspective from seeing things from behind. Kane is also the messy eater, but that is why Kane doesn't wear the shirt. Everything Kane does is sensible when you think of it, yes. And today, Kane senses that he stalks his foe, Mobius. Very compelling intro, Peyton. Hello everyone, my name is Ray. And hello, my name is Taylor. And I am the voice of Kane. Mighty Kane. That's Peyton, voice of Kane. And welcome to Legacy of Kane Defiance. For those of you just joining our channel, yes, we are female simians and we are beautiful. How do I make Kane do the sword? Yes, these controls are different than Soul Reaver 2. Yep, the controls are actually a bit more streamlined for combat compared to Soul Reaver 2. Defiance is a huge step up in terms of gameplay, but the puzzle sections take a big hit. I can see that Kane throws the brain beam with the tap of the button now. Yes. Oh, and look at these. I grab him with my mind! Too bad I meant to feed. The game has a lot of stuff with air juggling and combos, and they introduce you to it pretty gradually. The game's available on Steam for pretty cheap if you guys want to play along with us. It's an older game, but for our computer, we didn't have any issues. It features some great voice acting from Simon Templeman as the voice of Kane, Michael Bell as the voice of Raziel, and Tony Jay as the voice of the Elder Squid. Of course, those are just the three most pivotal characters, and the supporting cast is really good. Mobius is voiced by Richard Doyle. And of course, we put all that to waste by intentionally ruining the cutscenes. Yes. So even if you played the game once before, you'll get a slightly different experience with us. I think that covers all the bases for the first video. Great, so now we can get back to our usual gaming commentary. So what did you guys have for lunch today? Peanut butter sandwich. And given that life is kind of a journey and not a destination, I guess you could say that in a really nihilistic kind of way that's sort of an artistic choice. Great. I cannot help but notice I have less control of this camera than I am really happy with. Yes? Well, you do have a first-person view mode if you need it. I am not going to stop and do first-person view every time I want to look around. Yes. These were dark times in video gaming, the days before every kind of controller had a right analog stick. And I thought Soul Reaver 2's camera was out to get us. Yes. Hello, wrinkle lady. Sleep! Yes. It seemed that Mobius had prepared the feast for Kane, and Kane did not like to be the rude guest. See, you know, this is the thing. Games create this really unfair standard. I have peanut butter for lunch. Kane gets to drain the blood from a victim. Truly, it is for the escapism that we play video games. I don't know, Ray. Do you really want to be the hero in a universe where Peyton gets to control your every action? Right now, she's taking the predatory Kane and making him look like a little kid lost in a supermarket. I am very happy with this set piece, yes? But I feel like I should be able to interact with it some way. I think it's because the camera was looking directly through it. Like, this is important. It was probably just kind of a cinematic view, but as a player, you feel like you're supposed to do something to it. Oh, excuse me, Wrinkles Lady. Yes? I did not realize you were in here. I was looking for power-ups. The Seraphim are supposed to be vampire hunters, so I wonder what these people did to get themselves arrested by the Seraphim. Probably for asking really dangerous questions, like, Hey guys, why are you killing all the vampires? Maybe we should have courtrooms and trials and stuff? I see this prisoner gets the Ultra Deluxe Two Bedrooms room. Very ritzy. Yes. Oh, hi, Roller Prisoner. I bet she gets a bath in scalding oil. That's kind of terrible, guys. I know, yes? Clogs up your pores. Oh, yeah. What was that? <laughs> seriously, Taylor? Yes, seriously. Kane just pulled a Kool-Aid man and then impaled the guy on a spike. Why do they even put those on the wall? Water make Kane sad. Yes. Kane would find another way around. Um, for those of you who didn't catch that, water is fatal to vampires, so Kane can't touch it. Maybe it was wrong of us to let Peyton play Kane. What? How dare you? I am perfect for this role! Yes. Perfect is a really strong word. 
you know, Kane is like a really eloquent, smooth speaker. And I'll grant that you capture some of Kane's more... Commanding. I was gonna say eccentric personal qualities, but yeah, okay, commanding. Still, I'm not sure if you really capture the smooth or elegant stuff. You cannot take this away from me, Taylor. I will fight you for this. Yes, she will. I've seen it. She'll use teeth and she will bite you. Flop, that thing must have been made out of cork. But it was surrounded by the metal ring, yes? You would expect clang. I like the scenery. I know, right? I don't know if there's anything too special about it, but it just feels kind of rich. It's probably a couple things coming together. Good lighting, good texturing, good room shape, maybe. Gotta question these guys just changed the wall out here. Yeah, here's a good place for some shackles. I know we've got empty rooms down in the prison, but meh. Anyway, though, yeah, so far the stronghold is well detailed, but not overdressed. This hallway is clearly for the good prisoners. Yes, they get to enjoy the fresh air. What are you doing, Peyton? Silence! Kane was not sure what to make of this vampire skull with Arrow's magical road. The reaver vibrated seductively upon Kane's back. Perhaps, as with all things, yes, violence was the answer. There was the flash, but nothing more. Still, Kane was sure that violence would be the way. Yes. Peyton, you gotta upgrade the reaver. You forgot your upgrades at home again. No, no, this game has an excuse. You gotta remember, this is the reaver that we yanked out of Raziel's chest before it devoured his soul. The reaver is still young right now. It hasn't been upgraded at all. I like the way that Kane sneaks through all the cutscenes. Yes. Run, 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 run while I control him, but then sneak, 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 sneak into cutscenes. And of course, it isn't the cutscene that Kane is captured. You're not even captured. Kane could turn into bats or mist and just leave if he wants. Of course, he'd rather stick around and kill everybody. But I think you can just walk out that door over there. Well, then this guy I pulled down here in the pit with me is captured. Yes. You need to practice work on your combos, Peyton. Right now, you have about the grace of a drunk alligator. Dude, a drunk alligator sounds like one of the most terrifying things. Besides, didn't we have some kind of discussion that an alligator would be like the number one foe versus vampires? Yes, because they're aquatic ambush predators and vampires are weak to water. But I wasn't saying that a drunk alligator isn't dangerous. Clearly Peyton is dangerous. I'm just saying she's not very graceful. You fool, Taylor. The Reaver is unbreakable, and I can use any sword style I prefer. Yes, drunken alligator or otherwise. I think that Kane has basically unparalleled super strength, so all he's gotta do is swing that sword as hard as he can. Well, if you're gonna get into relative strength and what should kill people, those guys probably should have broken a lot of bones when they hit the floor after being yanked down one story by Kane's telekinesis. It would have been a lot funnier if they had cracked like celery when they hit the floor. Yes. You know what other game had telekinesis that I never got? Destroy all humans. You could throw people like four stories in the air, and they would come down, then just get back up like nothing happened. It used to drive me crazy. For a game called Destroy All Humans, the destruction stuff was a little bit on the weak side. Well, that game was like science fiction camp. Or a parody of science fiction camp. It was really lighthearted. This game is a lot darker. I mean, you can throw people on spikes. You'd expect throwing people to the floor from a story up would do a little bit more damage. I like the way that Kane opens doors. Yes, very forceful. And as for the power to throw people around, I'm happy just to have it, Taylor. Thank you very much. Oops, almost ran into the water there. I don't think you're supposed to be here yet, Peyton. No, but they like these tapestries though, yes? Kane should steal one and hang it over his throne. Well, I guess since Raziel killed most of Kane's vampire nation, that's about the only way he'd get new tapestries. Well, that makes me think. Before, Raziel and the other lieutenants had their own custom banners and uniforms, so there must have been some kind of textile industry within the Vampire Nation. See, that was then, but then when Raziel comes back, everybody is mutated into, like, gremlins and spiders, and they're all completely nude. They've given up on clothing. That must have been an interesting transition period. Yes, everyone mutates, and then they stand around and they say, We have to make new clothes for ourselves now. What if we just stop wearing clothes? That would save so much time! Yes! And everybody agreed except for Kane, who continues to wear pants, and who probably sits around thinking to himself, Oh my god, what is wrong with my kids? That's kind of Kane's whole story though, isn't it? He's really disappointed about the way that his role in Nosgoth turned out. He's trying to make the fate change so that it's something different. Yep, basically. In an ideal timeline, Kane's lieutenants would have stayed young, sexy, shirtless men for all eternity. These things I am pulling people out of. What are they made of and how do people get inside? Yes. It looks like wood that they decorate really heavily, and I guess they just build it around a guy and then say, okay, this is where you live now. You're devoted to the Seraphim. 
We'll bring you food and water three times a day, and don't forget to be in your armor. This game is a really weird mix of really good design choices, and really baffling stupid design choices. Like the floor tiling looks good, and these pillboxes look good, they blend in with the scenery. But why? I'm gonna say there might be a slightly harebrained approach to form and function. Like we've seen some stuff that had really good form, but not very good function, and now we're seeing something that has good function, it works with your telekinesis, but not very good form. I think you guys are being too nitpicky. Yes, it is not jarring or disruptive, and I am happy to yank people from the cylinder. Well, I'm not saying we can't enjoy it. I'm just saying it's weird. Humanity was fools to think this remote door technology could do more than slow, Kane. Yes. So we got to a checkpoint. Does that mean the game is saved? Can you give it a second? Save the game. Okay, game is saved. Yes. Okay, so checkpoints are probably where you go back to if you die. This room looks like a trimmed down version of William's Memorial from Soul Reaver 2. Not trimmed down, it's got more decorations. It's just smaller. And it doesn't have a picture of Janos getting his heart yanked out. It only just happened in this time period. Yes? Give the stained glass painter some time. Oh no, a dude! Oh, if you saw on the left that guy ran through that door, it opens up like a garage vertically, but only high enough that he has to crouch to get through. It's good for their legs. Obviously, Mobius cares about the health of his army. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, these doors are great. You can get all around the place, but every time you go to a new room, you're gonna have to do a squat. It's a positive thing. The Seraphin army probably has the most well-toned butts in all of Nazgul. Oh, you combine that with those crimson outfits from Soul Reaver 2, and oh my gosh. Every time they walk into town, it's like ladies everywhere. Probably false. But I bet the Seraphin like the joke that that's true. No, 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 no. Hear me out. It could explain why these guys are so hardy, because I've read that when a guy has a woman in his life, it expands his lifespan by like two or three years. I'm pretty sure that's only natural lifespans, and only because a woman will make a man go to the doctor when he feels sick. A reasonable hypothesis, but I like to believe that it's because a woman's love is keeping the man alive against his will. If these guys have lots of girlfriends, the power of love is keeping them going regardless of Kane slashing them in the chest. This thing Kane found was clearly made by vampires, and thus rightfully belonged to Kane. Yes. The Reaver seemed happy with it. It makes the Reaver glow in very pretty colors. But still, it is too convenient. Clearly a trap by Mobius. Yes. What ho! A vampire! Seraphim team, assemble! <laughs> ho! Surrender, vampire! You are clearly outnumbered. And little do you realize that it is you who is outnumbered. Yes. Count again, vampire. There's four of us and one of you. Then Cain will have to thin the numbers until he is in the majority. Yes. Status screen. How do I achieve the status screen? Yes. Oh, well, I would have thought the start button, but apparently no. We'll probably have to check the controls at some point. I think it matters what you have equipped in this game. Oh yeah, all the glyphs and forges do different things. Yes, it was crucial of the last game. You'll think you would remember that for this game too, Ray. Well, I do, but only vaguely. Like I remember using the time glyph for everything and never switching. Oh, are they not well balanced? I do not remember. I remember being trapped for all eternity in Vordor's mansion because of a glitch, and I remember the combo system. And some story details, but I don't remember anything else. Aw, oh, and here I thought you were our resident expert on Legacy of Kane. Not exactly. I really loved the series, and I played Soul Reaver 2 obsessively because I was trying to figure out the mystery. But I've been looking a lot of stuff up, and I only remember some details from Defiance. Do you remember if the rest of the game stays this detailed in terms of backgrounds? Don't quote me on this, but I think it doesn't. But I might be wrong. I know Vordor's mansion was really good, because I was trapped there forever. Well, if you are trapped forever somewhere, at least it is someplace nice. Yes. Well, the carpet is just beautiful. I mean, I gotta figure out where that guy gets his carpeting. What are you doing, Peyton? Trying to figure out which button opens Kane's inventory. Yes. Well, stop. You can't just seamlessly cut clicking in and out of the menu like that. So Vampire Skull with arrows met Kane again. But this time, Kane would respond successfully with violence! Yay, violence worked! You think Kane would have learned a thing or two about magic by now? No. Yes. Magic is too hard. 
Kane already spends enough time learning how to sew his own leather pants in the era of vampire nakedness, thank you. That time period turned out a lot differently than Kane imagined it, I think. It's tough when a vampire utopia doesn't work out. You imagine this society right out of the Twilight books where all these shirtless vampires are running around, but then people always want to do their own thing. They want to mutate into horrible monsters. Well, at least Kane's rule is better than the Seraphim era. Yes, where everyone wears the face-concealing helmet. Yeah, yeah, no... No telling how they were on taxes in either era, they never really discussed, but... But you couldn't tell who had pouty boy lips, though, back during the Seraphim era. Anyway, here looks like a good place to stop for now. Thanks for playing with us, everybody!